Hello there, this is Vishal Bhutto from the JNU Linux Users Group, NIT Durgapur. Welcome to the very first session of web exploitation. So today we will be going through the basics of web fundamentals. So let us jump to the world of web uh, and know about its principles, its working, its functionalities, and of course the vulnerabilities that comes with it. So websites all around the world are programmed using certain programming languages. There are certain vulnerabilities associated with each of these programming languages. That the developer should be aware of. Now there is other vulnerabilities as well, which are inherent to the web and which is independent of the choice of programming languages. So we will discuss about them one by one. So what we are going to discuss today is that how the web works: the client and servers, URL, HTTP, HTTPS protocol, what a website is like, its basic components that is HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Then we are discussing about cookies, local storage, and database. Then we have. to know about the chrome dev tools which are very important in analyzing the content and the behavior of a website and then we are going to learn about request and responses so let us begin so what is a server and client now to make your website available to the common public it must be hosted on a machine that is connected to the internet on a 24 hour basis so this uh, machine is known as the web server whereas the common uh, devices which the users use to connect to the website is known as the web clients as you can see in the image uh, the pc smartphone laptop the devices that we use you know, the browsers are basically your web clients and it connects to the server which helps in turns returns the website now let us come to what is the url is now url as you know stands for the uniform resource locator a url is nothing more than the address of a given unique resource on the web actually in theory it is actually points to a unique resource such as an html page a css document an image so basically that is it in the image you can see that it refers to the http protocol and then we have followed by the domain name that is www.example.com that is the domain name or is commonly known as the host then we have the port which is the which is 80 for http and 44 443 for https then we have the path to the file in a specific website then we have parameters where you can pass queries and then we have anchor to lead you to a certain point in the document so next we come to about http and https protocol so what is http and what is https http stands for the hypertext transfer protocol HTTP uses TCP that is a transmission control protocol generally over port 80 on the other hand https stands for hypertext transfer protocol secure also referred as http over tls or ht over ssl what it allows is that it allows tcp to send and receive data packets but it operates as i told you before over port 443 and it is very secure now what is difference between http and https http url in your browser's address bar starts with http semicolon slash slash whereas for https it is replaced by https in place of http http is unsecured while http is secured and thus provides a good amount of security http sends data over port 80 while http uses uh, 443 http operates at the application layer while http is operated at the transport layer of the uh, tcp protocol and no ssl certificates are required for http whereas the ssl certificates are required for https and is needs to be signed by a ca http does not require domain validation whereas as http requires at least a domain validation and certain certificates even require you know legal document validation and there is no encryption in http whereas https the data is encrypted before it is sent to the server so what is a website is now well website is basically a collection of web pages that are linked with each other now the basic components of a website is the html css and the javascript if we refer to the common analogy html serves as the bones css as the skin and javascript as the brains so let us know more about them in detail so html is the bones of a website What does it does is defines the layout of the website, like where you are going to place your buttons, where text boxes, images, what you are going to have it, and it also defines where to load the JavaScript and CSS files from. So it basically defines the structure and layout of a website, as you can see in the image. 
Next, in CSS, which is the skin of a website, it defines what the website element should look like or would position in the website. It generally refers to the presentation of a website and it can be written in the HTML or can be loaded from an external file as well. So, it generally helps in designing the website and for basically the presentation purposes. Then we have the JavaScript or the brains. JavaScript is basically a scripting language which makes the website to do something. That it is helps to define actions and you know define the behavior aspect of the website. Like you, what will happen if the button is pressed or you have to animate some things on the web page or you make end-to-end -end request. So that is why JavaScript is used in the website. Now what are cookies? Cookies are nothing but small pieces of information that are stored across visits to the same web page. They are maintained by the browser and are sent along with requests. They help to maintain a session after you log into a site. So you must have used Facebook, right? So while using Facebook, you have must have logged in. While logging in for the first time, it takes a bit longer than usual. But when you log in for the second time or the following times, it takes a least amount of time. This is because of the stored sessions in them in the form of cookies. Next comes the local storage. So local storage is just like a cookie and it helps to store key value pairs like it. It is not sent with a request to the server and it has a large storage size limit as compared to a cookie. Like it, a cookie has a size of about 4 KB but a lo uh, in local storage it can store up to 5 MB as well. And it persists indefinitely in your system irrespective of the sessions. Next we come to the imp most important part that is the database. What is a database is, is an organized collection of structured information or data that is typically stored electronically in a computer system. There are mainly two types of database. That is a NoSQL database and the SQL database. An example of NoSQL database is MongoDB and an example of SQL is MySQL. Now you must have used Facebook. So while logging in you must have given him the uh, password, the username and the address so each of them is stored in the uh, database in the form of a table and when so a database is actually stores the data in a very structured format and can be referred to very easily next we come to the most important part that is the chrome dev tools chrome dev tools are very much important in analyzing the functionality and the content of the website these tools are very much important in the field of web exploitation and there are mainly four types of dev tools that we are going to discuss today that is the inspect element, the network, console and application. You can open the Chrome DevTools using the F12 button or using the Ctrl Shift I press together and it generally depends upon the browser that you are using. So let us discuss one by one the following DevTools. DevTools inspect element. The DevTools inspect element helps to an analyze the HTML content of the page, delete or add the elements and helps you to view the event listeners and styles that is the CSS property. So let us see this tool in real time action on our very own glug website at nitdgplag.org. Here I am at the official website of the nitdgplag.org. So as you can see here that I have not opened the DevTools. So what should I do to in order to open the DevTools? Exactly. Have the Control Shift I. So when I press Control Shift I together, as you can see that the elements tabs get opened. Now, as you can see here, I can see the overall HTML content of the page and also I can see the styles applied to each of these elements. The elements tab helps you to alter the HTML and CSS content as well. So what I'm going to see here, I'm going to inspect the portion over here, suppose our vision and I'm gonna transform it into lowercase and all the letters in our vision will be converted to lowercase characters. So just let us see. And as you can see, the letters has been changed into the lowercase characters. Next, I am going to discuss about the another dev tool that is the console. The console is very important dev tool as it helps to view the errors in your JavaScript file and helps you to exit your very own JavaScript to interact with the web and the already existing JavaScript. Let us see it in action as well. Here I am at the home page of Google. As you can see here, the JavaScript running here throws no exceptions. So let me run my very own JavaScript here. I will type here console.log which helps to print a statement 
and then I will give a string input here. Let me consider J N U Linux users group and let me press enter over here. And as you can see, the JNU Linux users group text gets printed. This is how the console tab actually works. Next, we are going to discuss about the next dev tool that is the network tab. What does the network does tell is that it helps to view the requests that are sent from your browser to the server and the resources that are requested from the server with their proper status code. It helps you to view the login forms and the file uploads as well. So let us see it in action as well. As you can see here, I have my network tab opened here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to refresh the page once. And as you can see here, you can see that you have the all the requests that are sent to the server for the following resources along with the status code. I'm going to discuss the status code in the responses section in detail. So this helps you to see the how the website is interacting with the server overall. Next. We are going to discuss about the dev tool that is the application tab. What does the application tab is does is that it helps to view the cookies and the local storage for a website. It helps to also modify the contents so that you can web mess with the web service. So let us also see it in details. As you can see here, the application tab opened here shows me all the kind of storage that I have. That is the local storage that and the cookies that the, that we are storing. So this helps you basically to analyze the local storage and the cookies that are stored in each session you enter into the website. Next, we'll discuss about a very most important part that is the request. So what is a request actually? A web request is actually a commutative message that is transmitted from the client or the web browser to the server. So what does a request does is that it helps to request the server for certain resources. A web request is also known as an HTTP request and they are mainly of four types that is get, post, delete and put. Next we come to responses. What are responses is that an HTTP response is what is sent by a server to a client in response to an HTTP request. It is in the reverse direction for the request. These responses contain a certain status code which helps to analyze whether the re response that you have received is correct or not. And if the response was successful, then you can say that the client gets its requested resource. So let us know about the HTTP status code. The HTTP status codes are very much important in analyzing the responses from the server that you are getting. If you get a response starting with one and it continues up to three letters, and mainly suppose say for example 100, 101, 102. This says that their information responses that is the third server is actually thinking through the request. If you get a status code with 200 or 201, 202 like this, this means that your request was a success and the request was successfully completed and the server gave the browser the expected resource that the client requested for. Then we have a HTTP code of 300, 301 and 302 and if you get this kind of status code it means it, it you, have, you have been redirected to a certain anchored uh, page or to some other web page. This request was received but there has been a redirection to some other sites or pages. If you get a status code of 400 or 402, 403, 404 such that these are basically client errors. So these are the errors that are faced from the side of the client. Suppose the page is not found or cannot be reached or suppose the request but made but the page was not valid. And suppose this is the error on the website side of the conversation often appears when a web page does not exist on the site. If you get errors like 500, 501, 502, these are basically server errors and these are basically failures. That is a valid request was made but the response was not completed or was invalid. So these are basically server errors. Now examples of status code, there are very popular uh, status codes that you will encounter mostly while operating on websites. Some of them are like 200, that is the request was succeeded and the result meaning of a success really depends upon the HTML method. Suppose you get the request and you have a post request of it. Then you have 301 
So 301 is means that the URL of the request resources has been changed permanently and the new URL is given in the response as well. 304 means that it again is a redirecting with it tells the client that the response has not been modified. Then we come to the client errors like 401 that the client must be authenticated to get the requested resource. 403 error shows that you do, that the client does not have the proper rights to get the resource. 404 says that the resource was not found actually and the browser returns the 404 error. 502 is basically that the server while working as a gateway to get a response needed to handle the request but it gave an invalid response. And 504 is like the server uh, gave an error response when the acting as a gateway and it cannot give the give response in a given amount of time. So suppose it, let me explain it using a real time example. You must have been using Instagram or Facebook a lot. So while you are using Instagram, you must have been posting the images. So while this post is actually a request that you made to the server. As soon as the post request is made, you get the desired resource that is 200 if the post was successful. In case there is some kind of a server error, you will get errors such as 502 uh, or you in suppose you in suppose uh, you type a wrong URL uh, while getting your pictures, you can get a 404 page error in case your URL was not correct to the redirect source. So these are the examples why you get a status code. You can I can show you a live example at our GLOG website. So as you can see here, I am here at the Genu Linux users group website and as you can see, you have you will get all the status code here. Suppose 200, it means that as I have told you before, it stands for success. 304, it stands that uh, it have, have been redirected. And then you can come to suppose 404, it stands for that this, this tile sheet that is the global.css has not been found and the server returned an uh, invalid uh, response as well. So this is a basically a client side error and so on. So basically this is shown in the network tab uh, as I have told you before. So this is what status codes helps to analyze the responses from the server. Yeah, so that's it for today. Thank you for joining with us in the very first sessions of the web fundamentals and uh, keep uh, subscribe to our channel and like the video and may the source be with you. See you next time.